Today's episode of the No Fun City Podcast is brought to you by Craft and Ride. Check them out at craftandride.com for all your one wheel and one wheel pint accessories. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Welcome to the No Fun City Podcast, episode 12. Another day, another podcast. It's always something. It's always something. Because people can hear that. <laughs> they hear it all the time. Yeah. That's fine. Um, episode 12. Today we're here with Mayumi. And Mayumi is an actor or actress. I don't know if females prefer actress, but I feel like... I don't like really care, but I think, I mean, actor is fine. Writer, director, voice actor. Oh, yeah. All yeah. of these things. Yeah. That's exactly what we're going to talk about. And we're going to see... Wow. If she ever met the man in the high castle. (laughs) But let's start real quick, Mayumi, with your childhood. Because I know your dad was a journalist. Yes. Wow. And you've traveled as a child. Like you used Mm. to live in Washington. Yeah. And Tokyo. Yeah. And now you live in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Did you live anywhere else that I'm missing? Uh, I lived in Belgium as well. Okay, yeah, there you go. Brussels, yeah. All these crazy different places in your childhood, right? When did you move to Vancouver? That was 2010. Okay, so not even very long ago, right? That's like 10 years. Yeah, this year's, this summer is going to be my 10 year anniversary. Yeah, that's crazy. And did you move here for work or did you move here for film school family? okay yeah nobody's so, here from my family it's just me yeah um yeah i came for film school for so why did school. you choose vancouver oh it's such a random reason oh i shouldn't say random <laughs> i did want to go to like new york but like like you know so many people mm-hmm. um but it was my first time moving out and living by myself and my parents were sort of like Oh, New York's a little like it's a little scary. <laughs> they were really worried about me. Yeah, fair enough. So, um, and then my dad went on this business trip to Vancouver, and then he came, he he came back and he brought this brochure of, of VFS, mm-hmm. and it said like there's a summer intensive, and at that time in Japan, I was in this agency and I was really getting suffocated by like. The entertainment industry in Japan. Okay. And um, I was feeling like I don't like, do I like acting anymore? I don't know. Because it's a very, um, it was getting toxic for me. And then, uh, yeah, he brought this brochure. I don't know if he even remembers, but he gave me this and he said, well, what about Vancouver? Like, I want a cottage in Canada in the future. Can you do that? <laughs> and I was like, ah. Uh, and I looked at the brochure, went to the website and they had like a one week summer intensive. And I was like, one week I can maybe like wing that. I can yeah. not wing it, but like I was worried about my English for sure. Like I wasn't, um, I could speak English, but I hadn't spoken uh, at this level for like so long okay. that I felt like, um, I don't know if I'm ready to do like a one year yeah. to jump into like a full program yet. So a week felt like doable. Okay. So I took the one week summer intensive, uh, to do acting and then, yeah. And that's how I discovered Vancouver and VFS and met these instructors and the classes were great. And I, I never had a, a process training for acting yeah so um that was my first and that's how i wanted to like come to vancouver mm-hmm. and then you know like it was summer too obviously so it was the most beautiful time in vancouver so yeah. so were you acting originally even back like for example in tokyo or oh yeah 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 okay, i did so a lot started... of theater okay yeah i did a lot of theater in vancouver no, not in vancouver in tokyo mm-hmm. and then um like freelancing i actually before that i was in like a drama club during junior high and high school as well mm-hmm. so if i really count those years i feel like i've been doing maybe almost 20 years now but I quote unquote professionally, I think I've been doing this maybe 13, 14 years now. I yeah. Think. Yeah. And 14 years later, you've been on shows like The Man in the High Castle, yeah. The Terror. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah you yeah. were a voice actor in a video game called Parappa the Rapper. Yes or no? Is that what? true? No, that's not true. Really? Wouldn't that that would be a that's that was a huge video game. Yeah, I that was, was not... that's in one of that's in something that I saw. Really? About you. Yeah. You know what's it's funny? It's a credit. 
I am mistaken as another Japanese person whose、oh. name is Mayumi Oshida, who also used to be a Power Ranger. So,、um, oh, I think she actually passed away.、Oh, no. Was she the yellow one? Tran? I don't know. Or whatever. I've never seen it, so I don't know. Okay, if it's. Are we talking about the Power Rangers like when, when like, the l o n g long time ago? I think so. Yeah, the Asian. Girl who played in that actually passed away in,、oh, really? in a car accident randomly or something. Oh my god. That's why in the show she's just like gone suddenly. And then they they said that like、Weird. her and one of the, I remember this, her and one of the other guys went away to become ambassadors of something.、Oh. And like that's kind of how they like played that off. I don't. Okay, maybe it's not her.、Okay. Or maybe it's someone, but they've missed.、Okay. Someone has mistaken me as someone who is Mayumi Oshida. So, my IMDb actually is like kind of messed up. So, did you do any <laughs> voice wiki- acting? I have done voice acting. I've recently done voice、stuff? acting. Yeah. And for- video games or no? Video games, I've only done like Wallas, but I've done, I just did, I just finished. You didn't do Pokemon、this. Advance? No! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I you feel are, no, no, so no, 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 don't feel bad. I just, feel, okay, after we, bu- like, after you, we got you booked in yeah, here or whatever, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. looking at, I'm like, whoa, she did voice acting for all these video games?、Oh、Parappa the、God. Rapper? Like, I was gonna go old school with that you. Like, that was like, so of, funny. Apparently,、that's... you played the voice of Bird in Parappa. Rap of the rapper, so、oh, okay. whether you want to accept was that, it or not, what, what, what was it on PlayStation? The original, no, I mean, like, what was that information on? Oh, I think it, I'll have to look. It was like a Wikipedia or something. Wow, yeah, yeah. my Wikipedia is for sure. Can it was like a lot of people's Wikipedias、up. are, I don't know, <laughs> they just let random people pick and choose. It's so true, yeah. My, so, my IMDb, my birthday is wrong, okay, and I've already like. Okay, I will officially say this. Yeah. I was born 1986, August 1st. Okay. But for some reason on my IMDb, it's like 1982, August、okay. 26th or something. Okay. I always get random messages around August 26th, and I'm like, that's not my birthday. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I'm、hilarious. also younger. <laughs> that's funny. But I can't change it. IMDb always refuses that. You, you, we can't. The, only, the person who is. That person can't even change it. Really?、Yeah. So who does? I don't know. That's so weird. I know. It's so That's weird. That's crazy. I think SAG AFTRA is suing them right now. Okay. Yeah. And Wikipedia is kind of like that too. Wikipedia, oh, is it? Wikipedia, it's like, like、oh、I can't go in there and make a Wikipedia page of myself. Oh,、whatever. you can't? No, it's got to be like a Wikipedia person that like does that and then other Wikipedia people that add to it. Oh, my God. That's、gosh. the problem with Wikipedia, is it's like. Built off a nest of like a bunch of people adding information, and、yeah. some of those people add incorrect information、yeah. or are misled for whatever reason. Because you know, when you like search on Google, my friend sent me a screenshot of it and it's like, it's so wrong. And I'm like,、yeah. oh, that's not me. But oh well, you yeah, know. It is what it is. It is what、yeah. it is. It's just, okay. Just take the credit. You know, from here on out, just like, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah, I totally、that's、did、hilarious. that. That's hilarious. I used to play that. That's yeah, so funny. That's why I was like, oh my gosh, that was like a really hot game back,、yeah. back then, you know? I must have, what was like, that? That must have been like, like 20 year something years ago. Oh my gosh. It was something around there. Yeah. yeah it was crazy. Said all these video games I want to talk to you about, but now、oh, I'm not going to talk gosh, about them at all. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. That's fine, it's not your fault. I did do a voiceover gig that's called Hello Ninja that's on Netflix. It's a cute、okay. little kids' show, but、okay. it's got nothing to, to do, do with, with games. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. That's totally cool. But here's what I was going to ask speaking of names and being mistaken for different names, you were going by another name, yes or no? There's something on that on the internet too, saying that、What? originally you were, you had another name. What? Like if you type in Mayomi Yoshida,、yeah. it's also、uh, another person, another like individual first. You were someone else first and then you changed it to Mayomi <laughs>、oh、Yoshida.、God. Is this not it's true? It's not true. <laughs> All of these, all, see, the truth is coming out now. Oh my god. Now we have reference. What's happening? I don't know. I don't even know that. I didn't Do you even, want me to show you this? Sure, I didn't、Can、even I know that. I well, didn't let me even show you know this that. real quick and then we'll continue the conversation. Somewhere it said, Mayumi Yoshida is like also known as. FYI, it's Mayumi. It's Mayumi. Uh, sorry, yeah, sorry. no, 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 it's like Mayumi. I know、Mayumi. a lot of people, it's no worries. That's so funny. Somewhere. Also to... known as Misono Moria. 
right here what? on Wikipedia. Miss Sona. Oh Maria. my god. She so oh my god, my Ms. face Sona is Maria. all over the place and here's, with the wrong information. Here's the thing, and if you type this ah. in if you type in Miss Sona Moria, it shows up. What? Yeah. That's so crazy. Yeah. I'm so sorry, Miss Misona Moria. I'm saying sorry to Misona Moria. Sumimasen. Yeah, or Moria Misono. Wow. Yeah. That no, I'm. That's my name is completely Mayumi Yoshida. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Pretty basic name. That's so good. Wow. That's, wow. that's some intense stuff. <laughs> Oh like, my god, what are you going to talk about now? You have nothing I, to talk about I with me. I feel like I just taught you about yourself. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Like, instead of the other way around, it's like you you teaching me about That's everything. So it's like, crazy. yo, you did proper the rapper and don't even know it. I didn't even, <laughs> oh my gosh, how did that happen? I don't, have no memories of it. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Well then, I'm glad that I clarified all of that. Because yeah. I was going to ask you, I was like, why do you go by another name now? Yeah. Like, how do you go from video games to this? But now yeah. we know. There was none of that. I'm seriously all worried about, like, you, I've, like, destroyed all the topics no, that you wanted is, to talk about. No, no, no. About. That, they, they were just quick. Like, they were the intro topics, okay. right? The other <laughs> topics that I actually want to talk about were the short films and the movies and okay. the TV shows and just everything that you've been doing now. But that just kind of, like... Uh, that changes the dynamic yeah. because I thought I had some like insider stuff that was yeah. just like, oh, this is super, this is a gem here, this gem here, oh nope, all fake. But even that in itself is a gem. That's true. Because we figured out That's true. the truth. Yeah, so, here for the first time yeah, ever. Yeah. I've, I didn't even know that. So. I will make this specifically a highlight portion of the <laughs> podcast so that Anytime you get asked about this, you could just be like, this is the truth behind who I am. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so going to the truth of who you are, uh, you end up in Vancouver. You do Vancouver Film School. What happens next? Um, I became an actor. Yeah. But how do you just become an actor? I know, right? It's so like, weird. I, sh I shouldn't say that because yeah. I think I was already an actor. Mm -hmm. That's what we that's what I tell my students as well. But like, um, I think I graduated yeah. first and then I got an agent and then, um, yeah. And then just keep auditioning and then mm -hmm. doing, you know, volunteer gigs or making short films, meeting filmmakers. And then, uh, yeah. And then down the road, um, for some reason, the opportunity came well, I should say for some reason, but like, I, I feel like maybe it was a natural way of, I, I was doing acting for four or five years. And then afterwards I was like, oh, I think I want to do something more than just this mm -hmm. because it is a lot of waiting. It's a lot of, um, out of your control, totally. which is, uh, the nature of just our job. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if you're like a TV and film actor. So... Yeah, and then um, I wrote a play, and that kind of led to my filmmaking career. Mm -hmm. I was just yeah. gonna ask you. I'm like, were you get were you um, acting and creating, or were you acting first, then creating, uh, like you know, writing and directing? Acting first. Yeah. yeah I think. Well, training for acting was first, and yeah. then because um, when I was in Japan and doing theater, it was just kind of like. You just learn and just get the experience as you mm -hmm. do so many stages. And I did a lot of plays and did it with many theater companies, which was really great. And every theater company was almost like a little school. Every time I was doing in the company doing that show, it was like being in a class for those like four or five weeks. Okay. Because um, we have a different way of rehearsing in Japan. Like here, mm -hmm. it was one of my like shocks when I was trying when, when I was starting rehearsal for a play how not everybody is um mand mandatory to like participate in the rehearsal okay. only the people let's say let's say there's like 10 people mm -hmm. and in in the cast and then we're gonna concentrate on a b people so we're gonna have a, like three cast only in our rehearsal today so the rest doesn't have to come okay. that's not the case in mm -hmm. japan like every single person participates we warm up together and we do the same routine together like we would 
And some theater companies are like super intense warm ups. Like some people would have a, like a crazy dance workshop warm up, or um, like it's almost like a, what do you call those? Oh my gosh, uh, what what's the uh, what's the workout that like everybody's like? Oh, what's that workout where like you? It's, it's not. It's a workout. Yeah, it's like a it workout a routine that, that like every it's everybody's like in a. It's like not in a team, but like it's not a boot camp, but like anyways, it's sort of a boot camp for okay. this rehearsal where like you the first two hours is just boot camp, like just working out and then waking up your body and then we yeah. go into scene work. Okay. And then every single person, even if you don't have a scene that you're going up, you still mm -hmm. watch and participate. And watching is like such an educational experience especially for me because i was like 19 to 23 24 when i was doing all that mm -hmm. like seeing everybody who's a lot older than me to like do all these stuff was like it was just so um inspiring and um i it was like i was get we was taking classes every single time i go to rehearsals so um why did, why did we start talking about that? Well, you were talking about the the difference between the work, like working together as a team yeah. in the plays versus out here. It was a shock to you because here well, yeah, only don't... the people that are necessary go to the rehearsals that day. Yes. Versus why did there. It lead to that? Because you said it was a shock to you how when you came here that was the case and you were so used to the Japanese way. Yeah, but why did it lead to that? <laughs> I don't remember. Um, I, oh, well, like, I think you were explaining, like, how you were going from acting to writing and directing. And then I'm like, well, which one did you do first? Did oh, you right. First? Oh, well, yeah. And then you're like, yeah. And then when See, I came here. See, you're so good at well, this. Well, I'm listening because oh, I have to pay gosh. attention. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, you'd say that and I'd be like, shit, I, I don't remember either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I did uh, that. That came first, doing the theater stuff in Japan. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, but sort of watching the directors, how they work in every single theater company kind of gave me an idea of like, oh, this is how like different directors work and they're all very different. So I realized that like, there is no one way. Yeah. And so, um, it wasn't as scary to do my first directing gig in Vancouver, which was a play first. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the name? It was called, this is a play. <laughs> By That's Daniel awesome. McIver, yeah, okay. it, it's it was it's such a great play. It's so funny. It's really, it's almost like a mockumentary of okay. theater. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, like I think each character is like man, woman, older woman. <laughs> and oh, okay. Yeah, they have a lettuce in their hand. It's like they're making fun of you know those like very meta theater. And they're like, I have lettuce in my hand. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like super artsy fartsy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the play itself like makes fun of it. but it's not. Yes. Yeah. And then the whole dialogue is actually, the actors are talking about their inner monologue. Oh, but it okay. looks like their mono, it's the monologue in the play. But yeah. what we're hearing is actually their inner monologue. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, that casting director is sitting over there. I wonder if he's looking at me. I need to find my light. Or like, it's that's the dialogue. Yeah. So it's really funny. So, um, but yeah, so that directing thing was really fun. And then I kind of got, and I, I don't know, I got, I, re, I got excited that like, oh, maybe it might be a cool thing to do something like that again. Mm -hmm. And then I did this event, which was, uh, it, it was a, a beautiful poetry reading event held by um, uh, Sayuri Yoshinaga, which is like Japan's Elizabeth Taylor. So she came to Vancouver and uh, did a poetry reading at UBC. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto, who is um, a super famous uh, composer from Japan, and he's based in New York now, but uh, he did like the songs for, he composed the songs for The Revenant and like oh, wow. many, many films. But um, he, but he was like, he was, he would play the piano to her reading poetry. Okay. And I was sort of helping out that event because it was like a Japanese held event. Mm -hmm. And what would you do? I was, I honestly, I was just their handyman I'm okay. a woman. I was just kind of like, if they need something, I'll go give it to them. And, um, because they're not from here, they mm -hmm. would need lots of like local help. And totally. so, um, it, there was like a like a rap party of some sort, 
and then them and some other uh, people who are part of the organizers kind of we were all chatting and then they kept telling me that like writing is so important Mm -hmm. like being a writer is like it's such a powerful thing and to be able to tell a story that you want to tell that's so important and a lot of people don't do that so if you can do that i would love you to pursue it and i think that would really help you as an actor as well and they would it it was just like a, a like an advice for them. Yeah. They were just giving it to like a young actress. Mm-hmm. And I was just kind of like, ding. Oh my God. It inspired you. Totally. totally. I just, totally. I mean, they were one, they're just like such iconic people to me, but also, um, there was this song that, uh, Mr. Sakamoto played, which is called Aqua. And it's such a beautiful, beautiful song. You can find it on YouTube too, but that song, every time he played, he would first rehearse it. And I, when I first heard the re- rehearsal, I was like, <sighs> crying. Just n- n- out of nowhere. Yeah. I couldn't even understand why it came out. And then I was like, oh my God, this is so weird. And then now it's like the actual show. And then he's, he plays that song again. And I'm like, Again. Did you check to see if anyone else was crying at that point? Uh, I no, I didn't. I was too like I was trying so hard yeah. to like not cry because I was on the side of the stage like supporting everybody, so which like, makes you cry more. I should, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like quiver. I shouldn't be. I shouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Be. <laughs> but yeah, I it's yeah, it just kind of it was like this string, and he kept plucking it, and I was like, nah, and everything just, um, yeah. And I remember he 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 came down stage and he got off stage and he saw me and I was like, wow, like again? And I'm like, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. And he's like, oh, well, it's, uh, what did he say? It's like, it, it means, um, it's like, uh, it, it's almost like it, it's, it's worth playing because, oh, okay. because there's someone like you who's like, appreciates. Yeah. It. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he said crazy. it in a more, more casual way, Yeah, but, um, yeah, it was very lovely. And then that song then kind of really inspired me to like write because mm-hmm. just around the same time my grandmother got really sick. Okay. And then um and then the story of Akashi that I uh wrote as a play was uh and that that story was around for, with me in my head for like maybe like 2 or 3 years at that point. Yeah. So I was like, "Oh, maybe maybe this is the time." having that inspiration from them and then this music kind of really resonating with me and then that grandma's actually getting quite sick i felt like the clock is ticking for me as well yeah so uh yeah it's almost like i got that push from like three directions and i was like okay i I have to do this so when you did it did you write it with the fact that you're actually going to push it into production in mind? Or did you write it just to write? Well, I actually, um, coincidentally, I already had a Fringe Festival spot. Do you know what the Fringe yeah. Festival? So, yeah, I had a spot at the Vancouver Fringe Festival mm-hmm. through my uh, nonprofit arts um, uh, arts community called uh, Ode. And we had a spot there. So, and the play that I wanted to do I couldn't get the rights in time oh, okay. so actually it was like oh what should we do and then because we have the spot at the Colch, uh we had to put up a show well, not we had yeah. to but like we had the chance to mm-hmm. so I thought well I guess like I've been procrastinating or like avoiding making excuses not doing it mm-hmm. so um I guess that was another push that like okay like, we I got I gotta write this. So there was like uh it's for it's the writing is for specifically for that. Okay. Yeah, so that's where it started. I think I started writing from like June. Okay. And then I finished around mid August and then we started rehearsing and then just around that time in August Story Hive came with the uh, female director's edition short Ooh, digital shorts. Okay. Yeah. And then they were kind of like looking for submissions. And then um, uh, my colleague slash senpai slash uh, 
my I don't know I adore I adore her her name's Karen Lamb and she's my like first director um but she kind of tagged me her and some other people too but tagged me on like the thread of on story hive saying like we're looking for female directors and i was like mayumi you gotta like you don't you do like theater directing like yeah. you should because at that time and this is only just three years ago mm-hmm. three three and a half years ago people were like scrambling to find female directors like who's oh, a uh, female director yeah and i think uh that's why a lot of people were tagging people even if i had even though i hadn't done any film directing i had done theater directing so i was mm-hmm. like i mean that's like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you can do that right and i'm like i don't know i don't know if i can but uh i did obviously have like film and tv experience mm-hmm. so um i felt like and at that point i think we were shooting season two of high castle as well so i had like a good amount of set time to like learn how people operate on set on professional mm-hmm. set so i could understand what happens behind the monitor and all that stuff so um that uh became sort of my training ground as well to see how they work and then um so yeah and then i was like okay well maybe what is there to lose mm-hmm. i submit and i don't get it that's okay so uh i wrote the storyline that i didn't get to put into play which was part of that world yeah so a little bit of what's in the play and then something that wasn't in the play i put it in the short which became akashi uh, when i wrote it it was based on true story but mm-hmm. um i did add some parts that just it i just let my imagination Okay. Go and then see where uh, the love story took. Yeah. And then, um, yeah. But the conversation between me and my grandma is like, that part is, in the short, yes, it's it's true. Okay. It actually happened. So is that a normal, like, was your grandma one of many people that this was the situation you know your grandfather included yeah right? yeah 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 right so is, is that a norm that that like we just don't know about or that at least i don't know about in maybe after making the film uh i discovered more stories not in my family i mean mm-hmm. like from other people they would message me and said actually this happened to my family too or um my aunt or my mother experienced it or like stuff like that so that's been a really eye-opening thing after making this short and screening Mm -hmm. it to like many festivals yeah um and now you're making a feature film out of it correct uh yes i am in development of that i'm still looking for um i'm actually having a meeting with telefilm tomorrow to kind of like talk about stuff but yeah i will where the script is written and we're kind of looking around like we want to shoot this this year yeah Yeah. so how do you take a 10 minute short and turn it into a feature film like how do you you know because it (laughs) seems like okay the the movie's done like i I saw it right so what how do you take that and sort of bridge it to be something i don't know 10 times as long or however yeah Uh, i mean it's It was originally a play, so there was a lot more story that wasn't told in the short. Okay. But um, it's been a very interesting journey to see, like, what works for film compared to theater. Mm -hmm. Because the things that I did for theater didn't necessarily work for the film version. So I had to change the script quite a lot. So that's been, like, the journey for the last year or so about, like, what is... um, what is the film medi- medium script of Akashi so that we are not just like copy pasting everything? Mm-hmm. Um, it, and it's my very first time writing a feature. So it's been like a great learning curve of like, um, oh, this works. That doesn't work. And um, I've been very fortunate to have so many people, my managers and in the States and my um, just a lot of people around me who's been so down to like read it for me and giving me feedbacks and uh i realized how like the writing community is so warm it's so welcoming and i didn't it's kind of a different vibe from the director's community or like the acting community the writer's community is like i don't know it's 
it's like supportive. You're, it is very. I mean, but it, it's supportive in the filmmaking and the acting community too. But it's mm. almost like we it's we share your pain, kind of oh, like okay. because I think everybody knows how hard it is. I mean, everything is hard, but if it's it, oh hey, yeah. <laughs> That's so cute. And it's going in the audio too. Oh, like great. he just that's, that's the one thing I can't <clears throat> I actually sometimes I want to get side note a Lucas cam where it's just down here <coughs> and when he starts making noise <coughs> I could like just show that and be like just understand my that's dog. Where, yeah, that's where yeah, that's what's happening. Right now. <laughs> my dog's licking himself right now. Oh like, my god, that's yeah. so great. Oh, but How his precious. snores now put me to, like, help me. They soothe me. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, oh. sometimes I'll wake up in the morning. It'll be, like, the weekend. <clears throat> I'll have great sleep, whatever. And I'll be awake. I'll be ready to get out of bed. And he'll be like, <sighs> like, he'll just have these snores. And I'll just be like, oh, that just put me back. And I'll I'll go back to bed. Oh. Not even wanting to. It's just, it's weird. It's a oh. weird thing. And I've talked to a few friends who have dogs. And they say that they have the same uh sensation when their dog snores yeah it's really weird i uh, i my dog snores too i have a similar feeling i went i think it was like the first time i had to travel to la and it was like a week away from the dog and my boyfriend yeah and but like i traveled quite a lot so uh i've been away from my boyfriend before so it's like it's you know it's okay, it's work. And totally. because, you know, you Skype and whatnot, it's like, it's a, it doesn't feel that far. Of course. But with the dog, you, yeah. can't, you can't do anything. I can't be away two days without, ta- like, making it's sure so, I get a I, photo or I didn't something. know it was that hard. Yeah, it hard. was really hard. It's hard. Yeah. I, it actually, like, hurt me. It's yeah. like, I, I can't see, I can't hear the footsteps. And, like, it yeah. was so ingrained. And in, even though it had only been, like, six months since we adopted her. Yeah. It's, like, so fast that it just totally. became part it's of my love. life. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, it is. Yeah. Speaking of love. Yes. We go from one <clears throat> movie based in Tokyo to another. Mm-hmm. Tokyo Lovers. Correct? Yes. But that you co-directed and co-wrote. Correct? Yes, yes, with the Diana Bang. Oh no, that's uh, in Diana loving memory. Bang. That's the new one. Oh really? Uh, Natch does Dimeta, which is oh, okay, my okay. partner, the yeah. boyfriend I was talking about. He uh, co-directed and co-wrote Tokyo Lovers with okay, me. Okay, nice. Yeah. Is he in the? Is he? The... He's not in it. No. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. I was um, say. He, he is not an actor. He okay. actually is like a very very skilled producer, and he actually can do anything, which is so yeah. crazy. I can't do much but he can do anything and i'm like whoa (laughs) what he because even even on tokyo lovers he was um directing with me and writing with me and then also sometimes cam mopping with our dopy and then also doing sound so (laughs) like all together he's doing everything oh yeah he really was doing crazy everything so what was it like co-directing and then also i guess working with your boyfriend, because I'm sure mm. working in a maybe it's stressful, maybe it's not, but I'm gonna assume even working on any form of production has somewhat a little bit of stress to it. Did you guys have any arguments or any bickering? You know what I mean? Boyfriend right, and right, girlfriend, right, right. like disagreement on something small in a tense situation can blow up to be something big. So mm. was that <clears throat> I guess collaboration with your boyfriend easy to the point where I guess you would do it again or did you find it to be extra difficult because it was your boyfriend as opposed to someone that you didn't have a I guess a, a uh, personal relationship right. with right yeah, yeah I it's I I'm going to admit I love co-directing mm-hmm. it's been really 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 fun for Diana and Nat as well yeah because um it's I I don't know I love hearing other people's opinion and then kind of bouncing off ideas, and uh, the greatest thing with Natch was we have a very similar sense of story. Yeah. So our instinct is very similar as well, and mm-hmm. that's maybe one of the reasons why we even sort of like um, I don't know like connected in the beginning. How like we appreciated the same sort of art, some sort of story, same sort of like. Yeah, like it, it just, um, even when we were writing, it was, uh, we would ask questions to each other that sort of like helped the story move forward. Okay. And it was never, there was no 
Yeah, they're really, it's... There was it's, no issues. Yeah, I mean, there obviously is, like, issues like, oh, my God, we're not going to make it to this. Like, what are we going to mm-hmm. do? Like, you know, just the logistic things that would happen or, like, um, how are we coordinating this? We don't have enough this, this, this. Like, you know... But there was no brick wall. Oh, no, 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 not at all. A, like, an actual decision when it came to the the film or making or any production where Mm -hmm. he wanted one thing and you wanted another and there was no I think most times maybe he's just been very kind (laughs) and very like you do what you want to do no he hasn't been like that but uh but he is a very kind person I've um yeah we've never had that thing where like we can't okay I can't work with you anymore we have a different opinion yeah it's always been like um what's best for the story, what's best for the short. Mm-hmm. So uh, even if... I think the, the, good, the good thing is that we never really take it personally. And when we do, or mostly me, <laughs> when I do take yeah. it personally, I, I'm really quick to like put up a flag and say, hey, that hurt. Okay. And then we can be like, oh, that wasn't, that wasn't the intention. Mm-hmm. That wasn't uh, what... I meant this is what I meant to do and I didn't know how you were feeling about that. I'm sorry. So it's I'm very open with about my feelings with Mm -hmm. um, not just him, but with a lot of people. So whenever I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Then I'm like, yeah. So then it's um, I I like I like it that way because it's one. I, I just don't know how to work without not being able to express that. It's just it's a lot. Because it's such an intimate work. Filmmaking mm-hmm. in general is like, it's such a, you're so close, not totally. just like distance wise, but like your heart and your brain is so close. We're mm-hmm. all trying to solve this. We're all trying to find the best solution. And um, sometimes, of course, it, it, it if it clashes, that happens. But if you can't talk about it, then like, it'll be a really hard relationship to like build something together. Definitely. You know? So, yeah. um that is, I think it's a really important thing from the very beginning to sort of like acknowledge that. Yeah. And um, and if if you do come to that problem, like to talk about it, I'm a true believer of like just communication. Like you, anything can be solved by communicating. Mm-hmm. Even if you have different opinions by communicating, you'll find a solution. Maybe you'll find out that like, okay, maybe this isn't a project. And that's okay. We're not going to die not making films. Yeah. You know? So, but um, most times I think it, it ends better because now we're kind of not just talking about what you want, but mm-hmm. like, it's like, what is best for this? Because, oh, sorry. It's okay. Because <laughs> cause the film is kind of like everybody's collective baby. Mm-hmm. So, um, but yeah, I think me and Natch have been really good at finding that balance i think the only thing that we struggle is we put we because we're workaholics we put so much time in work and we're like we should like this is a real thing he got us like a spa gift card last february Mm -hmm. we still haven't used it oh really because that's like a year i know we're like we could use it this Valentine's Day. Yeah, that's <laughs> so that's funny. how much like we just don't. But um... will you use it this Valentine's Day? <clears throat> I really hope so. Okay. I really hope so. Take we do some have some deadlines sure. in February. Oh, damn. But <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah. It's that's the only thing that we really um, we need to work on is mm-hmm. like balance. But yeah. I think that's everybody. Yeah, no, no, you know, no, no. work life balance. Definitely, one hundred. So hard because it's also like. Your hobby slash your love is your work. Yeah. So you, that's how it should you know? be. Yes. That's how it should be. <clears throat> that's not the case for everybody, but that is that's how true. it should be. That's true. Yeah. That's how it is for me and you. But then <laughs> but then you do, there is no holiday. There is no, you that's know, true. you kind of have to like, then where, where, when is the time where you clock out? When mm. is the time where you like punch in? And like, oh, I'm not yeah. going to. People know? ask me even like, I don't have weekends. Sometimes my weekends are during the week. Like, it just depends. Oh, yeah, totally. It really depends. Yeah. It just, what's happening that week is what's happening <clears throat> in my schedule. And yeah. And that's kind of uh, the bittersweet Absolutely. part of it. It's cool, but it's also a crappy situation sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to sort of, yeah, you need to recognize it. Like, oh, oh, shoot. I have not seen that friend for over a year because yeah. I haven't really actively made time to do that. Totally. Yeah. It's crazy. 
But so far, okay, two <clears throat> films based in Tokyo, two films both also starring you, like shorts, I guess. Right. Right? So is this something we're going to see consistently? Is that, um, I guess, like the things you write, or maybe the short stories you write, will always be super personal? Maybe always take place in Japan or Tokyo, and maybe, maybe oh. always star you? Or is this just something that happens to be the circumstance of these two movies, for example? I've actually um, directed stuff that hasn't starred me, which yeah. I really enjoy, because mm-hmm. it's... Are it's those like... things that you also wrote, though, or no? No, actually. I haven't... Mm, no, I'll... Ooh, ooh. Like, my question essentially is, right. like... Are you if starring, I'm writing directing? Yeah, if you're writing and directing and, you know, you're acting in it, is it because you feel super close to that, like that story ties in with you? So yeah. is that why you're acting in it? Or is it just by the, oh, and, you know, he's going to play <laughs> the lead or whoever? Uh, for Akashi, it kind of was necessity. Mm-hmm. I couldn't find someone who could speak fluent Japanese and English. Okay. Uh, who's around my age, <clears throat> age range, and possibly free that time too. Like it just, it was all kind of convenience. Yeah. And then um, Tokyo Lovers, I think the same thing because we had such limited casting crew. Okay. Um, we wrote pretty much based around me and Jerome, who played Paul, and then Suzu, who's my friend in Japan, who's now in London. Best, he was. What was it? The, what was it? Super... Oh my gosh. Best man? No. What was, What are those like beauty pageant things? Oh, Best, like Mr. Universe. Oh, there you go. Mr. Japan. He okay. was Mr. <laughs> I can't even remember. Mr. Japan. He was Mr. Japan. But he, I've been friends with him before that. And what we were year? Like, 2013? Mr. I think? Japan 2013. I think. How do you get to be Mr. <clears throat> Japan 2013? I, have, I don't Mr. know. Mr. Japan in general. I don't know. He he did it, and he okay. was, and he became that, and he's nice. very, he is very good looking. But he's more than anything, he's such a cool dude, and uh, he's pursuing acting in London now. But um, yeah, he he it was because we were just it was all limited that we kind of that's the reason why I was in it, mm-hmm. and then. Um, trim that i just directed it's probably it is probably my latest short that i shot and finished which uh was for the blood and guts film festival which was my first horror short as well Mm -hmm. um which we won best short film nice yeah it was great and then that that one was made in 48 hours and um i really i wasn't sure if i was gonna be in it but uh I, was, I guess it was another situation where, like, I don't know what to write until... Because it's a 48-hour film festival. Oh, right, right, right. I wasn't sure what I was going to write. Mm-hmm. So I just sort of, like, hmm, and gathered the people that I wanted to collaborate with. And then I gathered, like, really awesome actors. And I was like, I want to work with them. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so I just I just wrote a tiny role for myself so I could just be oh, okay. in with them. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I wrote... The main characters are is not me. I'm like literally in there for like maybe twenty mm-hmm. seconds. Like a cameo. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, that was really really fun. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I don't. I actually I'm start. I'm enjoying for sure. Like not being in it and just directing mm-hmm. because it's it's just as fun. Yeah. Yeah. So going back to acting, because now you're in awesome shows like. The terror. You are in the terror, right? We're not. I throwing... am. I am. Okay. I am. Yeah, but a little bit. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was the case with the man in the high castle and getting that role as the crown princess? Well, actually, I got it in season one because yeah. I was in there for three episodes back yeah. in season one. Um, when I first auditioned for it, they were the for, the pilot was out. Okay. Because I think they had a very interesting. Uh, format back in the days where like they would I think Amazon would like green light like like many pilots okay and then the public votes on which one they want to oh. watch and I think High Castle was one of the highest votes or highest I, I, mm-hmm. I can't remember but um 
Yeah, so it got made into... So the pilot was made already, and it yeah. was available on Amazon Prime. So I got to watch the pilot before the whole season started even filming in Vancouver. Because okay. they were, I think the first... Yeah, the first season was at Seattle. No, the first episode was shot in Seattle, mm. and it wasn't in Vancouver. And then from second two on... Uh, se- oh, my God. Second episode onwards, yeah. they came to Vancouver. Has all of it been filmed in Vancouver since episode yeah. two? Okay, yeah. it's Except funny. Except there, there, there are some, like, pickup shoots. Or, like, not pickup shoots, but, like, they would fly to Germany. And then yeah. in season four, there was a San Francisco shoot as well. Yeah, so, okay. And then some... Uh, Yeah, and some other seasons in the States. Yeah, because I could have sworn it was always in Vancouver. And then I looked up online. The the freaking internet is always wrong. (laughs) You can never rely on them now. It said that that it was made in, or that it's filmed in, I don't know, whatever, in Seattle. Just the first episode. Yeah, but it's just the first episode. But if you look, it says it was filmed in Seattle. Because they probably haven't updated it. Google needs to get there together. (laughs) Straight up. But see, this is another, yeah. Yeah. Um, so start, I saw the yeah. I saw the pilot, and I thought it was incredible. Yeah. It was such a beautiful pilot. Yeah. So instantly, I'm like, oh my god, I have an audition for this. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. So, and then I also, after watching the pilot, um, I, I shouldn't talk about this a lot on, but I'm gonna talk. No, about you it. should. <laughs> You should tell us everything. So I was... <laughs> Don't I, hold back. <laughs> I, I hated maths, like mathematics when oh, okay, I was yeah, a, yeah, in high yeah. school. Yeah. And um, I couldn't concentrate in class. I really... I'm okay. just... It was so bad. So yeah. I would decorate my notebook with my crushes. Okay. And so when I was 15, my uh, my crush was Rufus, who played um, John Smith. Yeah, John Smith. So really? When I, yeah. What? How did you know... Like Rufus from... Dark City was okay. the film. Yeah. And I saw him in that in Japan. And okay. I was like, oh my God. Goodbye, Johnny Depp. Hello. Yeah. I was just... I, I just fell in love yeah. with him. And then I would like find magazines that he's in and like cut it out and then put it... Oh, wow. just, Does he know this? I did tell him at the very end of season one at the <laughs> rap party because I didn't know I didn't I I wasn't sure that I'll ever see him again. Yeah. So I did tell him that, and then he was like he was laughing out so hard, but That's he was funny. like, "Why well, didn't even know that they would show it in Japan?" And I was like, yeah. "Yeah." But um, so yeah, I got that audition and I saw the pilot and I was like, "Oh my god, it's Rufus!" Oh my god. So I freaked out a little bit about that. Yeah. But then. I kind of got over it because I read the script and then I read the sides that I was auditioning for Mm -hmm. and it's so good. It's just like, I've never seen an audition that good that Mm. I was like, I need, oh my God, this is, I'm just lucky to be able to read, to act for this audition. Yeah. Whether I get it or not, doesn't matter. Like I just get to do this. So, um, magically I was in Japan that time when I first got the audition and then, so I couldn't go in the room in Vancouver, so they asked me to self-tape. Okay. And then um, that exact day, actually, I was I was hosting, like, a acting workshop with my friends in Japan. So, like, we had a room booked, and we were like, let's just, just for fun, let's just do, like, scene study together, and just, just so we, we can inspire each other. So we were hosting that together, and then I was like, yeah, I got this audition. And then we actually like the whole like the whole afternoon we workshopped that scene together. So we all played it in different ways, and it was super fun. And then we did self tape. So it was like so much layer for me because after we've done so much the whole afternoon with so many different actors. Totally. That um, the scene became just so much richer. I, should, I wish I could do that every single audition. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so I got to tape there and then I got back home. I didn't hear back a little bit. And then as soon as I got home, I got my e- I got an email from my agent that like, hey, they want to see you uh, in the room. So can you come in tomorrow? And I'm like, and they want to, you to be in a kimono. And I'm like, <laughs> I left my kimono in Japan. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> so, uh, so I was like, oh my gosh. So I, got, I asked around my friend. Thank goodness for Facebook sometimes. That uh, I like how they make you bring your own kimono. It's like, hey, 
Oh, yeah. By the way, get this because, you know, they're all over the place in Vancouver. And yeah. And you could totally just find one if you don't Exactly. Have one. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily, I found someone who's like a kimono collector. Oh, nice. And I went to her place the day of that audition. And in the morning, she like dressed me up. And oh, then wow, nice. I got to go into the audition. And then uh, Candice Elzinga, who is the casting director, mm-hmm. who is amazing, she was like, wow. Wow. And I'm like, yeah. Yes, I want <laughs> I know. this part. We did. Yeah. <laughs> I want this part. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and we did it. It was really fun. And mm. then I remember it was only in English. And they and it, it said like English only or something. Yeah. And then she, out of nowhere, like after we did the English tapings, she was like, is it possible for you to like do it in Japanese? Like just, just wing it in Japanese. Mm-hmm. And the next week, I got it. Nice. And it was like, what? I got it? <laughs> and then the day after or something, oh, no, no, the week after or something, I was, like, hanging out with my friend in West End. We had this cafe, and I was talking about, like, yeah, I have my table read tomorrow. And then my friend's like, oh, my God, that's incredible. And then just as I was talking about that, who walks in the cafe? It's Rufus. Rufus. Yep. Nice. He the love of in. your life. <laughs> Fate. Fate struck. And then I... And then two were one. <laughs> I, no. no, no, no. No, 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 no. So I was like frozen for a sec. And then my friend's like, you should go talk to him. Introduce yourself. And I'm like, but what if he's really scary? What if he's like, he's, he's so... Because he looks quite intimidating. Yeah, obviously, intense. John Smith. Definitely. So, uh... I was like, no, I can't risk it. I can't risk it. <laughs> so I didn't say hi then. And then the table read came. And then I was, I got there super early. And I was at like the very first to get at the table read. And I was just sitting there. Everybody trickles in. And you know, I'm saying hi, 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 hi. And I'm saying hi to a lot of people. And then suddenly the entrance door area gets like, like a big laugh. And I look over and it's Rufus. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I just like politely sit here. Just, like, being Japanese as possible. <laughs> and then I didn't look anywhere else. And then this hand came in, and I look up. And then he's like, oh, you must be the princess. Oh, nice. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't do that. I, yeah. like, killed all my emotions and said, yes, yes, nice to meet you. And I just, like, made it very professional. That's awesome. But inside, I'm, like, internally screaming. Yeah. So how does, like... <clears throat> What's that like? Because now, you know, you were working with these people, like, you know, whether you want to say uh, Rufus or Joel or all these other oh awesome gosh, actors yeah. and stuff like that. Now they're kind of, I don't want to say they are your friends or whatever, but they are, you know, you know, in any workplace environment, they're kind of like colleagues. They're, mm-hmm. they're your buddies. They're your friends. And even on your Instagram, you know, you went, you were at one of Joel's plays or something like that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So now you're hanging out with these people and, you know, I mean, you're coming from an acting background, so maybe it's a little different in your perspective, but I'd be thinking like, if I was just an everyday me, and then I'm suddenly in the same TV show as like these awesome stars, not to say that you weren't on their level at the time or anything, so I don't (laughs) want to say like come across the wrong way. I think the best part of that experience is that the actual person who is Joel Del Fente, Rufus, they're both extraordinarily great human beings mm-hmm. that uh, it didn't, um, it didn't, I shouldn't say crush my dreams because it's like, it's so not, it's so not fair to put that on any person. Yeah. I think uh, it's given me that like good check in that like, oh, I should, I shouldn't, I shouldn't really put anyone in that kind of pedestal I shouldn't not a pedestal but like you know what I mean like yeah they're also human so um in it's a really like good a way form of respect to treat them just like normal individuals right? yeah, yeah 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 but in a really good way they are such great human beings mm-hmm. and as artists I respect them gi- like ginormously mm-hmm. like if they're acting in front of me like I'm just like glued sometimes um because I was able to dialect the Japanese dialect coach for the seasons that I wasn't in yeah so um I got to sit by the monitor quite a lot and mm-hmm. like when they're acting I'm just like wow 
just glued because it's the things that they do is you can't learn it from any kind of film school Mm -hmm. you just like you just have to be there to witness and i was so lucky to be able to do that and um outside of set two like joel's so funny Mm -hmm. he's like the funniest he's always cracking up jokes everybody loves him he's such an idol on set because he's just he just has this warm and he's such a beautiful dad and a husband and Mm -hmm. I've actually been to his home in New York and when he was on set in Vancouver and I think he was even surprised because his uh, wife, Melissa, who's a beautiful woman who's like, she's a jewelry maker and beautiful jewelry, but she um, invited me over and she was like, are you at my house? And I was like, yes. (laughs) But yeah, he's so, he's so lovely Mm -hmm. that uh, he's now become so much more than just like a colleague. Mm -hmm. Um, I can like talk to him honestly about how I'm feeling about some things about like, Oh, I feel like I'm struggling with this or like that. And he would sometimes be my confidant, but also like a great colleague when I'm doing a scene together. Um, and it's, I feel so fortunate to have met people on set like Chela as well. And, uh, on that set, high castle, the man on the high castle set, I just met so many people. Mm-hmm. Like that, like Isa, our executive producer, David Zucker, Dan Percival, who's the showrunner, and, and just so many people that I'm, um, that show was not just like a gift for me as an actor, but as a human being, as an artist, as, uh, just as any, any, in, in so many fields, I just met so many people who are experts mm-hmm. at their craft, but so humble and, um, so welcoming and so like sharing with like all their gifts totally. and i realized that like the more you have that the like the big you think that like when you're so accomplished you've done so many things it's the opposite it's not they're not unreachable they're actually like the people who really care and are really good at it they're actually so willing mm-hmm. to share that's true and it's so that's lovely to true. see it was I was so blessed to be on a set like that where um, it was a mature sh- uh, a set where like a lot of uh, people my age was like I would hardly ever see mm-hmm. people my age like in their twenties or like early thirties, um, which I think was intimidating at first, but it definitely like was a great growing ground for me so that I could like see what what is what is the great you know totally where i want to go it's interesting when you were mentioning how i guess you were doing uh the translating on the Mm. seasons that you weren't uh involved or whatever colleague of mine uh jim skip who's like and sort of like i don't want to say older but older than me uh graphic designer once told me he's like yeah there's the stuff that you learn in school he's like then there's the stuff you learn in what he calls the street He's like, right. like in the in the situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like he's like, there's just stuff you will never learn in school, but a scenario mm-hmm. will teach you, right? And the only scenario that's going to teach you is the scenario of being there. Or whatever, yeah. Right? So yeah, for me, like with freelance design work, right? It's the same thing. It's like yeah, there was so many things that I did, didn't even think of that I you know like ninety percent of the stuff that I use now or the things that come across my mind when it comes to like the business and stuff is like not even relevant to what I learned in school, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and I needed to experience it to learn it, yeah. right? And the same obviously went for you, where mm-hmm. you were able to sort of sit in the behind the scenes, still be part of the show, and still gain that knowledge and experience of the street. Yeah. The, it's crazy how much... I was actually so surprised how many people were so supportive on my own work, yeah. on my like writing and directing. They were like so um, so excited that I started mm-hmm. doing that, and I didn't I did I really didn't think they was such a big deal, but um, it was so uh, encouraging that it wasn't just about like one person being an actor in this career of like an actor you know they totally. were just kind of like yeah like it's 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 amazing it's not just about that and it, it it isn't it really isn't about this credit yeah it's about this big show it's on amazon prime mm-hmm. because um it's just it's such a long journey and if you if you're looking at that there's like there's so many ways you can um 
express yourself or tell stories and like you know how you're doing there's youtube there's Mm -hmm. this there's you know there's so many ways so i think it was a it was so uh touching that they were um so happy that i was finding these different avenues like Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter to them but they would almost be happy as if they're my parents definitely you know so Yeah. yeah that's just been like a huge gift i don't know i don't know why like um i used to i used to think that way that it's like oh this this big gig amazon prime and it's like and yet you know when you're promoting it of course it's like the most important thing yeah but beyond that there's like um i'm i'm so grateful that i have my filmmaking career Mm -hmm. because there's the real like um how the hell am I going to get this funding? Or like, you know, all these real problems that you want. I mean, not, not, not that the other person thing isn't real, but it feels like that's the glamorous part of entertainment. Yeah. But 99% of it is like not glamorous. You're like in the rain mm-hmm. trying to get that shot. <laughs> like, or like you're in a co- they're like now you have to go swim in the ocean at five in the morning yeah and you can't be shaking and it's got to look like it's summertime and yeah. it's like winter and there's like <laughs> snow falling exactly yeah, i always yeah, wonder yeah. about that i'm like you know acting like seems like a bit of a glamorous life mm. but yeah it's like these shots that you see or certain uh whatever whether it be a film or a tv show even if it's just a scene and it's like yeah, they're in a miserable circumstance situation. You're like, man, I wonder how long they had to film that for. I wonder how long they had to be in that water for or all this stuff, right? And it is a long time. It's not yeah. It's not just like, okay, let's yeah. put Jack in the water and shoot for it a couple For 30 seconds, yeah. they would be shooting at all least day, five hours. Right? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That's intense. So now you have acting, you have writing, you have directing. But which would you choose to pursue more? at this point would you rather only act only direct oh my gosh or only write i would never like forever forever no (laughs) no well i just want to see where your mind is at like when you're thinking of the future are you thinking more of pushing for example your own projects like you know akashi (laughs) <laughs> which might become a feature film um yeah, or it will, it will yeah or are you pushing your acting career which is sort of like pushing other people's projects you know and i mean you have acted in your own you know you've made sort of like that meld of being able mm-hmm. to write direct and act all in one but when it comes down to the bottom line and picking a true passion of those three areas which would you rather do so if there is a movie or a feature film or a play, would you rather be the person acting in it, the person directing in it, or the person writing in it? Can I answer it in a different way? No. Ah! <laughs> How about this? Answer it in that way, and then I, actually, you okay, know okay, what? Okay, okay. I, I'll let you answer it in a different way. Yeah. Yeah, that, I'll accept that. I'll okay, accept yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, acting, because that's where it started. Yeah. And that's what actually... Um, fuels my directing and writing as well Mm -hmm. because when i write i always write from character because of my acting background yeah like when i'm writing i'm prob i have all these characters living in my head and they start talking to each other okay because i've built the characters in my head and as an actor i'm able to sort of like switch of like yeah but i i'm i'm on this side now and i'm on this side now and it's like to me, it's not that much of a, uh, it's really fun for me to be able to play these characters in yeah. my head as a writer, mm. because as an actor, I love playing all of them. Yeah. So, um, that's a really fun part of writing for me, which is fueled by acting Yeah. and directing is like, it's a different kind of beast because it's slightly producing as well, especially in the indie world. Mm-hmm. That's really hard. Because it's not as uh, acting oriented, but um, it all comes down to like storytelling. So it's the the joy of directing is like you get to see the whole thing the whole way through. Okay, which yep. is like really really fun, and that's the thing that I felt 
powerless as an actor mm-hmm. like i can't see all the way through because it's it's not it's not my film yeah and you're there for the scenes you need to be there then you're not yeah unless you're the yeah. lead you're carrying the whole film but yeah. still you're you're not going to be there in the edit suite you're not going to be there in the coloring sessions you're not you know yeah. so and that's i love post as a mm-hmm. director like post is one of my favorite things to do mm-hmm. so um but I've, I think, approached directing as an actor director as well. Like, I love to rehearse like theater. I love to um, prep like theater as well to sort of like have a conversation and then try it out many times. Actually have real table reads with people mm-hmm. and hear it out loud and then make changes. Yeah. Sometimes have people improvise and see what that sounds like and then write it. Like, I... I don't know. I it's it's all kind of it, it's step the stem is acting. Mm-hmm. So I don't think I think if there's one thing that's that might be the thing that I won't ever quit. Because also like when do you start and when do you quit acting? You know, yeah. it's <laughs> it's kind of um if I don't make a film anymore, maybe I'm not a director. I don't know, but it's mm-hmm. uh directing I'd love to do more right now. Yeah. Just because the the hours I need to clock is like I need to catch up. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of learning to do for writing and directing both of them. And when I did Akashi, my very big mistake for me was that <laughs> Thanks. I didn't um I didn't take time for myself because I was like, "Oh, I need to make sure everybody else is okay." And then I realized that, "Oh yeah, I'm like I meant like most of the movie." Mhm. I'm basically the lead, but I didn't treat myself that as a director. So I would like spend so much time on my scene partner and then give myself like 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I shouldn't, I need to, I shouldn't do that. Because when I found out in the edit suite, I'm like, I don't really have enough footage for me. Okay. And I was like, oh, shoot. (laughs) We should have tried different ways for myself Mm -hmm. so that... Because as a director, if I was watching, I could I would do that. You would know. Yeah. So, um, and that's why I think having Natch for Tokyo Lovers was great because uh, I could check in with him and be like, "Do you think we got it, or do do you think we need to do one more?" Mm-hmm. And then be like, "I think let's yeah, let's do one more." Or you know, I think it's like, "No, I think we can move on." Um, because sometimes you don't have the time to like check the monitor every single time. Totally. Most times you don't yeah. have the time. So. I feel I've learned that it's like a total different art form that like a short and a feature is. Mm-hmm. Um, and my agents and my managers have told me this too, how like writing it is so different. Yeah. It's a, uh, some things work beautifully as a short, something work beautifully as a feature and not, it's not always, you know, it's not always the same for like, it's, you kind of, and filmmakers too, some people are really great at shorts. Some people are really good at features doesn't mean that which is better yeah it's it's i feel like some people think that like oh if you're only making shorts you're not a you know oh you're just like a you know i hear you amateur director and it's like yeah. it's so hard to yeah. make a short a really good short film definitely and then they fe- and then they think that like if you've done a Many, many features, it's like more commendable. Yeah. Yes, it is. <clears throat> you could it's... say it's more difficult than a full-length film because you're quite limited on time anyway. Yeah, story-wise, like you, it's yeah, very... Yeah, you gotta be really like... It's weird because you gotta be like blunt and to the point. Kind of mm-hmm. like how you would do note form writing. You know what I mean? Right. Like bullet outline. point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Instead of writing out full sentences. Yeah. Right? But those bullet points like have to make sense to someone random reading those notes. Right. You know? Yeah. I, that, that's the way I see it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. To me, it, yeah, cutting it down is what makes it difficult yeah, in my mind. Totally. You know? yeah. yeah. Whereas if you, you're making Lord of the Rings, you got three hours. You got three hours. <laughs> I mean, that has its yeah. own struggle. But yeah. I, yeah. yeah. But you, you know what I mean. Like, yeah, I totally <laughs> It's interesting. It's crazy. Man, I never... Oh, I'm going to say the unpopular opinion that I What's never that? really was into um, Lord of the Rings. That's fine. Never. No, it's fine. It's, That's But totally a lot fine. of people love Lord of the Rings. Uh, it, it was a good... If it was Lord of the Rings yeah. or Star Wars, I would pick Star Wars. Oh, of course. Oh, so really? Yeah, oh, 100%. great. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind yeah, no, of... I would totally do that too. Yeah. 100%. Sorry, internet. 
Yeah. No, they, they're they're probably on our side. Star Wars oh, is yeah. like better than Lord of the Rings right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It is and more new. In fact, now that I see all the new stuff they're doing with Star Wars, I'm like, man, they should have done all this like years ago. What were they right. thinking? Like, why hasn't this happened? I have a feeling they're going to do the same thing with Lord of the Rings. I point down there because I have an old Lord of the Rings book. Oh, yes. Book. That's all three books in one book. Wow. Yeah, that's a hardcore book. It's one of my favorite wow. books. Like, just Well, they're have. making the series. Oh, are they? See? Amazon's they're learning. making the series. They're learning of Lord from of the Star Rings. Wars. Like, oh, it's a world. Oh, we could do anything now. Oh, yeah. like, we could make stories around these stories. And where it has a fan base. I mean, it's an epic. It's basically yeah. Game of Thrones. Yeah. So, I, I mean, oh my god, maybe that's unpopular. Well, they, they, <laughs> they're doing a spin-off of Game of Thrones yeah. already. They, they might actually do a couple now. Um, so, so yeah, those popular worlds, you know, they, they take off or whatever. It's... I just have a really hard time remembering their names. That's why, like... Like the names of the movies or the names no, the of characters. the characters? No, yeah. They all sound quite similar to me. That yeah. I'm like, uh, was Arag- Aragorn? What yeah. is it? <laughs> it's, it's, but maybe that's just my Japanese-ness kicking in. Like, <laughs> they all sound similar. That's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> the Terror... Yeah. I haven't seen season two yet, but you're in season two. I watched season one. I am, but I'm like yeah. in just a little, a little bit, bit of it. Like all, honestly, just a little bit. It was a slightly bigger scene and it actually I think is on my longer version of this scene is yeah. on AMC's like their own streaming network. Oh, okay. And you can see it as a bonus feature thing. Oh, nice. I, so I've never seen it actually. Oh, really? But um, it was a really great scene, but they had to... Uh, kind of down short for like many many reasons. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons which I think, I think I'm allowed to talk about it. It was very interesting because they realized they wrote a lot of the script in English, but they translated it into Japanese. Okay. And they hired a lot of like Japanese native Japanese native speaker um, actors, mm-hmm. which is great. And um, because of that, they're the Japanese rhythm is a lot more like at least in the scenes that they wrote it's a lot more like there's like pregnant pauses and like it takes a little more time than english oh yeah and and it was beautiful those nuances were um very subtle and uh but i think they didn't anticipate that in the script in the script stage yeah so they wrote a lot more but because of the tempo of how they speak the running time went, went like, way longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think they had to like trim it down a lot for like cut out a lot of storylines. Mm-hmm. Actually, isn't yeah. every page of a script supposed to be a certain length of time? In I think it's like one minute is yeah. like what people say. Yeah, usually. one minute is one page of a like a script. One page of a script should be one minute in the movie. Or Not something. should be, but I think it's that sort of like the general the rule general of count of like if let's say like. If it's a 120 page script, then it's yeah. like, okay, it's roughly two hours. But if it's like a, a drama, then you can anticipate maybe like at 50 minutes more or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have writing trainings. I don't know. What do you mean you don't have writing trainings? I don't have, I have never trained in writing. But you wrote to... I know, but it's self-taught. It's not like, I just, I just wrote... Like, I oh, did... you just did it. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't know. You I didn't like even some know. some script template or something? I looked up a lot of script templates okay, for yeah. sure. Like I looked up on YouTube. I um, shout out to Tony Joe. Like I loved uh, every frame of painting. Like that basically was my film school. Okay. Like I really have you seen every frame of no. painting? It's such a great YouTube channel. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah, it's all about filmmaking and like film theory and um, because I didn't go to film school. Yeah. <laughs> so well, you cute. did. I know. I- <laughs> So cute. People are, are going to so kill me. Great. They're going to be like, why is your dog snoring in the background? I'm like, I'm it's sorry. So Calm, it's hey. so cute. Hey, wake him up a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, that was my film school. And then I uh, really just reading so many scripts from working on High Castle and like auditioning. That was basically my school. I didn't mm-hmm. really ever. So... One, that's one of the reasons why writing a feature has been like it's it's really hard because you know so yeah. many 
rules or formats and like how do the what are what how do you do revisions and like I'm learning like every single day even yesterday too it was like how do you make sure scene numbers don't change and I think it's it's That's hard good. and you, you learned all this through YouTube essentially uh well YouTube and just like reading lots of scripts yeah. and then um and then Natch went to Capilano so like he's also teaching me how to like no you do this first and I was like oh, oh right, okay. right 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 and I'm kind of like learning yeah from yeah that's crazy I fucking love YouTube Tell yeah isn't it great time. yeah <sighs> I know like like I I've like I don't utilize it story. enough but I I should but yeah. it, there's so much well, it's not even just utilizing it. I tell everyone now, I'm like, if you can film or edit videos, you should have a YouTube channel about something, about one of your passions. Mm. Because you have no idea how far that channel can go and how far it can get you and all the things. I started my channel randomly. Mm-hmm. I didn't even like, I think I told you this or I'm like, I wasn't even planning on it. I just kind of did some videos and then they took off a little bit. So then I did more. And then... I had like 200 subscribers and this company loaded, mm-hmm. uh, sent me an email cause I'd done a review of their, one of their products and they were thankful. And then I'm like, Oh, let's, they're like the Nike of longboards, right? <gasps> wow. Yeah. So I'm like, this is big deal. Like, so I messaged them back. I'm like, Oh cool. Like let's work together. And I sent them some ideas and then they made me an affiliate. So I get paid from them and then they just send me stuff. Are all you the writing time. these down guys? Write like... it down. Because here's the thing. People <laughs> message me. I uh, actually, Earlier today, before I picked you up, yeah. I made my latest YouTube video, which is going to be about how I got my affiliates so early with oh, no wow. subscribers. Because I get messages from people being like, hey, man, like I started a YouTube channel. I have more subscribers than you, but you have affiliations and I don't. Like, what am I doing wrong or whatever? Like, what did you, how do you manage all of this stuff? First of all, rude. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I, I get it. I get where they're coming from. They're kind of being like, yo, like, I feel like I'm doing everything right you know, and right. I'm, I'm sort of like at a point where I should be kind of sought after above you. Like th- it makes sense. Like I only had 200 subs. So, so I get where they're coming from. It's like, how did you get this with so few subscribers mm. with no followers? Right? right. So I kind of detail that in my next YouTube video or whatever, That's so but YouTube, amazing. like it changed my life in the sense where I'm literally debating just stopping what I do for work and hopping on the YouTube channel, <laughs> like straight up. One wow. of the previous guests, Mike Watt, he's a YouTube tech reviewer. He actually lives in Coquitlam. Oh, cool. Yeah. He hit me up to talk about electric longboards, like randomly on the internet. And I'm like, oh, this guy's got like a tech channel. Oh, he's got like 30,000 subscribers. Oh my gosh. So we met up, we talk, and I'm like, you got to come on the podcast and talk about what you did. He quit uh, his accounting job mm-hmm. and became a full-time YouTube tech reviewer. And a year later, he has like 30,000 subscribers. And he makes more making YouTube videos now than he did working his accounting job. Oh. And he's like, he's like, not just that, he's like, I could see, I only have 30,000 subscribers, I could see how much more I can make in the future. Wow. So he just went all gung-ho, he quit his job, he worked part-time at like maybe a Starbucks for six months, and he just plowed videos, like, you know, every week, pushing, pushing, pushing. Wow. So he does mainly tech reviews, so he does products and whatever, right? Um, but super good, super cool. And then he's the one that pushed me to kind of be like, you know what? I only have 500 subs. I'm able to do this mm-hmm. already. I'm gaining like traction. Imagine if I had 500,000 subs. Mm. And you think about the, like, not that money is everything, but you think about the monetary gain compared to how much you would make working everyday job yeah. and it's on it's like a crazy jump it's a crazy <sighs> leap so youtube is even for you like you wrote and you directed and you acted in a in a movie like imagine had you made that even a behind the scenes series of like how i made akashi wow or akashi behind the scenes like i think i think for the future that would be nice yeah i'm st- i'm very i'm very like I like human connection, like yeah. in person. So this is really um, lovely. Yeah. But like, if I spend too much time on my computer, uh, that's like you. writing. That's one of the hard thing about writing that like it's it takes it's the isolation is sometimes great. Yeah. But then I get to a point that like, oh my gosh, I need human connection. Yeah. And then I run. <laughs> 
I'm like, who do I need to see? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. But it's, when you it's work really cool home. how like pff, skyrockets. Yeah, like yeah that. definitely. So I tell everybody now, I'm like, if you've got a passion, I even like, I tell my chiropractor and my physiotherapist, like random people. Cause they're always asking, they're like, like what? Like how does this, what? I'm like, you just pick, you have your niche topic. You have something that you're obsessed with or that you do for work. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to post on YouTube and watch what happens. And if you do it the right way, you're going to get sponsors and partners and you're going to get affiliations and you're going to get people sending you free stuff all the time. Wow. And that, that's literally what's happening now. And I just, I think that's why I take it more seriously right now where I'm like, okay, I'm pushing this. Okay. I'm doing the podcast. Okay. Cause now it's just freedom. Like now companies like this come to you and they're like, yo, we'll, we'll support your cause. Like we'll feed you. So you don't have to worry about that. Just go create stuff. A lot of my videos don't even have to do with their products. Wow. So, you know, you get at a, at a point where it's, it's very, I don't know, fulfill, fulfilling, but like, and rewarding, but in a very, you don't think of it as work kind of way. Right. Even though that's kind of what it is. Isn't that nice? It is. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So now I'm a huge preacher of start a YouTube channel, just put it out there. You have no idea. You need to be diligent like you, though. Yeah. Like, oh, for you sure. You need to be, you have for to sure. have di discipline and like yeah. anything. I mean, I guess it's, it's, there is no closer, like not, uh, there is no quick, easy anything to anything. Yeah. You always have to work, work for hard. it. And you have to like put the time and like totally. effort and actually, and with your graphic design, like background too, like, yeah you know, make it look good and like mm -hmm. presentable. Yeah. I think it's, it's worked out so perfectly for you because you have all that background too, that you're so capable and self-efficient. You yeah. don't have to like go outwards to source all this. Yeah. Like the marketing and then being able yeah. to do the graphic design and filming and editing yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I learned that stuff over the course of so many, like I didn't go to school for filming and editing. I just right. learned it as I went. Even the podcast, if you look at episode one versus this episode, even my speech, What number is this? This is number 12. Oh, number cool. 12. Yeah, number 12. Oh, yeah. Um, I've added things. Like, yeah, this these screens used to not be here. I used to not do the decals. Like, I didn't have an insert. Like, slowly and surely things built. Even right. the layout, the design. Where I put the cameras, every episode has been slightly different. Because oh. I want to see which angle is going to be best for everything, right? <laughs> so all these things, yeah, you take them into consideration. And then it just, yeah. You find what works, what doesn't work. But right. yeah, you're right. You just have to do it and you kind of have to be gung-ho. And in my case, you're right. The fact that I took graphic design and had marketing kind of helped mm. me together. And in a sense, how you do directing, acting, and writing could build a short or a full feature. Yeah. Right? yeah. I remember, uh, so I was, Akashi was part of this film festival called NBC Universal Short Film Festival. Yeah. Um, that f film festival would like take us to uh so many places like we mm -hmm. they would it was almost like they would take us on a tour like a executive filmmaking tour in LA there was one in New York and then this the finals were in LA so mm -hmm. we were all flown there and then um one of the stops was CAA so we were taken to like this ginormous office in CAA. What's CAA? CAA is like the biggest uh, talent agency okay, yeah. in the States. Yeah. So we went up to the office in CAA in this giant conference room. And then the, um, the agents of like Riz Ahmed and all these people were there. And then they all said, um, you kind of have to be a multi-hyphenate these days. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to, but like... And I'm just saying what he, they, they said, but, um, which really motivated me, but, um, because everybody's doing another thing, even if you're just an actor, some people, if, even if like Brad Pitt, like he's also producing, yeah, you know, and like, and many other people, DiCaprio, like all these other mm -hmm. people who seemingly looks like they're only acting, they're actually doing other things as well. Definitely. And, um, as indie filmmakers who wants to like break, break into that, uh, the, that league then um a lot of people end up wearing like many different hats and the more you wear the more you're aware of what's going on for sure and then there's um opportunities too so that's sort of becoming the trend and now sort of almost like the mainstream i don't i rarely meet people who's like oh i only direct 
Mm-hmm. Um, maybe some like TV directors that I meet are, but even them, like they've come from, no, I wrote and directed a feature and then now I'm directing TV mainly. Okay. So yeah. they've done that and then now they've sort of concentrated now on this, mm-hmm. but a lot of people do like, yeah, Martin Scorsese writes, right? I suppose so. I think he, he does, he, doesn't he? I believe he produces and directs either way. But yeah, I'm sure. Writing... Like, but so many people, like, um, nowadays, mm-hmm. like Greta Gerwig and, like, Noah and, like, even, like, if you just look at the Oscar contenders this year, there's just, like, Bong Joon-ho, obviously. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so many people, it's sort of become the the natural... Um, not progression, I guess, but like it's sort of become the mainstream of, I mean, I, at least that's what I see mm-hmm. that a lot of people end yeah. up writing and directing and, and, um, whether it's producing or it's acting, some people are like, uh, I love Phoebe Wallerbridge from, Fle- she just made Fleabag on Amazon Prime. Oh, I've seen, I haven't seen the, the, uh, like I've seen it on Amazon, but I right. Yeah yeah, it. yeah. 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 It's phenomenal. Okay. Uh, but she, that was originally a play that became a TV series, mm-hmm. but she's the writer and, um, and the actress as well. So oh, nice. a lot of, and she's, I think doing directing now too. So it's like a grab bag of a bunch of things. What would, if you had to give one word to what you do that encompasses all of that, what would it be? Storyteller. I like that. I think so. I really like that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, 100%, because no matter what angle, that is what you're doing. That's what I'm always drawn to. Yeah. No matter what it is, even if it's music video, Mm -hmm. um, that's what gets me going for sure. Yeah. Anything. So I got another question for you. Why did you choose to stay in Vancouver for acting and not go to somewhere like L.A. Mm -hmm. or New York? Specifically L.A., I think, especially. Yeah. It's not so far away from here. And also it's, uh, you know, like it's the hub for yeah, Hollywood and all that. Jazz. Totally. And, uh, I think I'm, and then like, I think like three years ago, no, two years ago. Yeah. Like two or three years ago, I've had the opportunity for like, okay, apply for the visa and get the one and make the move kind of thing. But yeah. like, I've always had this. It's changing, but I didn't like LA for the longest time. Okay. I didn't like the vibe. I didn't yeah. like the, I don't know. Um, I also don't like summer that's not Vancouver. Like okay. I hate hot places. Even though I'm, I'm a you. summer baby, I yeah. hate, I I'm hate with you. heat. I'm with you on that. So like, I can't, yeah. I don't know how I can manage like heat all year. As much as it's, the sun is nice. Mm-hmm. Um, any time but the summer in LA is like I'm sure it's very lovely because it's kind of cool but sunny. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't. Uh, there's some. There is something about because I hated Japan summer too, which mm. I'm going back this year and like, oh my god, <laughs> ah, it's gonna be so hot. But yeah, it's uh, yeah, I just didn't. It never. It was never my thing. And then um, there's something about the city that. It's so, uh, I, I hate that you need a car for everywhere. Yeah. I hate and you that. can't move when you're in the car anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I really, that makes, that frustrates me. And I feel like I'm like killing earth every single day I'm living there. I shouldn't say that. Sorry, people in LA. And I, I am, I do enjoy LA a lot more now that I've gotten to know the people who actually live there and love mm-hmm. it there. And um, they really make my experience in LA so much better than I thought before. Like they're actually, they really care about the craft and, um, uh, they're so lovely and helpful. And Mm -hmm. I think I had this, like, you know, that stereotypical LA image of like, just salad and blah, (laughs) but it's, it's not the case, you know, people love burgers, people love in and out and like, and there are a lot of people who are super genuine and, yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Like there's that stereotypical image kind of, kind of there still, but it's not as, as, um, uh, I haven't been exposed to that as much every yeah. time I go back now. Um, but I still love Vancouver because 
I just love that the mountains right there and the oceans right there and the cities right here mm -hmm. and it's kind of all like 20 minutes away yeah it's very it's really comforting to know that like I won't be so suffocated in this you but know. do you feel like it might be holding not that it is but do you feel it might be in some ways holding back your career from not being in LA and being an actress in Vancouver I mean Vancouver mm. you know Hollywood North or whatever um, but clearly like in LA there's gonna be a lot of opportunity so are right. you giving up a lot of opportunity in LA or are you just being like well I'm not gonna live there I think that and I can act from here and I could just reach you know I can yeah. sort of build my networks there I really believe here. that what is meant to be is meant to be mm -hmm. so um, if if I do get a job, if I, if I do if I do land a gig, then if my uh, schedule is perfect and all that, then I'll work there. Yeah. And um, if that's the calling, then I'll go. Okay. I think that's that's really our life. We're like, it could be New York, it could be Finland, it could be yeah. Japan, it could be you know. Um, that's how I feel. So I don't mind if it my work takes me to L.A. Mm -hmm. But it's not like a strong force is saying you must come now to yeah. LA. So it doesn't really a lot of pe I've seen a lot of people move there for the bigger opportunity and um end up coming back. Of course. Or end up getting a gig there and then come back and work here. Yeah. Which happens a lot in acting and it is mm -hmm. frustrating as a Vancouver actor. But again, the filmmaking part has really helped me that like that's not really my career. Mm -hmm. That's not what my career is about. It's not really about booking roles as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, it's really like, am I creatively fulfilled? And what is something that I want to be a force of as an actor or a writer or a director? Like, what is that story? Mm -hmm. And um, if I have something that I, if I meet a script, if I meet a director, if I uh, witness a, a I don't know, like a poster. I'm like, I want to be in that. Like, sure, I'll like ask my agent and something, and I'll let them know that this is what I'm interested in. Yeah. But it's totally out of my control. Yeah. Even if I move to LA, it's still out of my control. So what does your agent just find things for you and is like this, this, this? And yeah, you know, yeah, this, yeah. Right? And I have my reps in LA. Yeah. Now too, so um, whatever is fit for me, they'll send it to me, and I trust that. I'm also mm. not the kind of actor who is like pounding my. Asians all the time. I've never yeah. been that because, again, I don't really. And maybe if you, if we compare all the other actors who do pound their act, agents and like get auditions and book, mm -hmm. if we get statistics, maybe I'm like drastically low. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no idea, but we have, we all have no I have no idea. Yeah. I really care most about my peace of mind as an actor, as an artist, mm -hmm. and. I feel like that that energy of like I'm going there to get a job yeah is like that'll take away all the joy okay. of me as an actor that it's like I need to get a job and the, and it's important mm -hmm. but my job is also to tell a story and a story can exist here a story can exist anywhere totally and if that's if I find something that's really important to me right now which mm -hmm. right now is like my feature uh, or some other projects that I have. <laughs> You're so sweet. You're so sweet. <laughs> but, you know, it's like um, wherever that takes me is where I'll go, whether it be New York. Again, I don't know why, but <laughs> Finland is coming in my head. Or Belgium. I don't know. London, who, wherever it is, Toronto. Um, but I know that uh, the connection that I like this really had with Vancouver, like land wise, mm -hmm. it was so crazy. I just had this connection like, like six years ago. And I was like, Oh, this is, this is my home. Cause I didn't really feel like Japan or Tokyo was home. Even when I lived there for the longest time, even yeah. though my family was there okay. and I felt like this is where I'm supposed to belong, but I really don't feel like it. I feel like I need to get out of here. When when am I leaving Japan? Is what I was always thinking, but I couldn't find like a legitimate reason to like, or like a, a 
like my dad wasn't moving or like because they they were the reasons why I moved before. Yeah. But now, after I graduate university, I need to actively or like nobody has a reason for me to like you know I'm an adult now. Mm -hmm. I don't. I I have now I have to live by my own choice. Totally. So I think that first step was me moving to Vancouver, and then sort of this became my home. So um, and the people too, the community. I really love that, and the, and what they've given to me, I really appreciate. Mm -hmm. So um, I can't really. There's a part of me that feels like I can't just abandon. I wanna, I wanna pay back to like what they've given me. So hopefully one day I'll get to contribute more here, but to Japan as well. And then you know, dive into like different kind of stories and like whatever that takes me, that'll take me. But I've never really been the person to be like. Um, and even in, you know, coming to Vancouver, I wasn't thinking of, I'm going to book X files. So that's why, that's why I'm going to move to Vancouver. That mm -hmm. was not what I was thinking. I was like, I just, I met these people. I had this class. I'm mind blown. I have to be there. Yeah. So, um, unless there's that intense calling artistically to LA or New York or anything, I don't, I don't think it'll be like a complete move. And I genuinely don't feel like I'm missing out mm -hmm. because that's not, if it doesn't happen, it's not meant to be. And it will happen if it is meant to be. Totally. That's what I learned from High Castle, that it's like, when it's really meant to be, like, it totally just happens to you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even ask for it. And it just happened. Yeah. So, um... Like, kudos to all the people who go and get it. And I really hope that they get everything they want when they go. Because it's mm. such a scary thing to do. And it's like, it's so brave that they do that. But I also don't want to, um, dis not discourage, but like dis discredit the people who don't make the move. Because mm. it's, it's also like a beautiful thing to sort of cultivate what Definitely. they're doing in the same place. And for a long time. And, um... I just don't think it's like a fair comparison too. It's like, you know, every everybody has a different journey. To everybody's timing in life is so different. Mm -hmm. Something happens and that's that's life. And um some sometimes because something happened before, you're now the most driven at the moment, so you'll go right away and that's great. But it's so unfair to compare this person and then this person mm -hmm. when they're just not in in the, in, in the same time of their life. Definitely. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like it. I'm not missing out. And long, long, long answer. Yeah. <laughs> to like not, that question is like, yeah. I don't, I really don't feel like I'm missing out. Now, like we know writer, director, actor, but you're also teaching. I, saw, I rambled so much. No, no, oh that was, that was all good. Okay, and don't good. worry, the parts that I, I cut this down. So, so. <laughs> okay, good, good, yeah, good. Don't worry. Um, not that I'm going to cut that part out, but just in general, just yeah. to keep you posted. Um, but you also teach at the very school that taught you. Yeah. Right? yeah so now yeah, you teach yeah, at yeah. VFS. So yeah. on top of acting and all of that jazz. So mm. what's that like? And then also you spoke about, you know, getting the agent, this and that. And it's like, yeah, if you want to get into acting. So if someone's watching this or listening to this, who wants to be an actor, an actress or whatever it may be like. What is that process like? Like, how do you get an agent? And how do they, do they yeah. just choose you? Do you choose them? Do you pay them? Do they just take you anyway? Can I go up to an agent and be like, I want to act. Here, take my resume. Here's a bunch of money. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, what, what do you do? You know First what I mean? First of all, you yeah. don't give your agent money. Don't go to an agency that will and ask you money. money. Yeah. That's it's not legitimate. Okay. Yeah. There is... No, no legitimate agent will do that to you and say yeah. like up front we need five hundred dollars. They will yeah. never do that. Yeah, yeah. A legitimate no, I, 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 will I never hear. I'm do just that. saying like. But some people I've yeah. I've heard some oh, really? people yeah have met those people and I'm like yeah. no don't. So ever. what what's the, that process like? Like I can only speak from my experience, mm -hmm. but um, I think it always has to be the ideal situation is mutual. You all you both want each other. Yeah. I need you, you need me, is yeah. the ideal case. Sometimes it's not always like that. Sometimes the power balance is different. And in, if you feel uncomfortable in that situation, then you have to like check in and be like, 
um, this is what I want. Because ultimately, the agents are working for you. You're, yeah. they're, um, like they're they're gonna get they're, they're going to get your auditions, mm-hmm. and then it's up to you whether you book it or not. But I mean, actually, it's not really even up to you. Yeah, you do you do a great work in the audition is up to you. Whether they give you the job is not up to you. Okay. So isn't it crazy? It's yeah. just like oh, it's all up in the air. Okay. But um. I think the process is like if you feel ready that you want to audition for union jobs because you don't need not you don't need agents for non-union not at all you could most definitely have um, an agent as a non-union actor actually mm-hmm. many 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 people do um, I'm a union member but um, if you do want to audition for union jobs. Usually, the agents are the only people who can get you those. Okay. Because it goes through like a, a certain system, a website. Yeah. So, um, but uh, when you feel like you're ready to do that or want to do that, then you know, look, we I there's like a website called Vancouver Actors Guide or like you know, just the internet is your friend at that time. Like when you go to IMDb, if you have IMDb mm. Pro, you can look at their client lists. I think the best way is to uh, know someone who is in that agency. Okay. So that they know, like, their agent, and then they can say, like, oh, this is kind of the vibe of this person, this agency, or this agent, and this is how they work. And also, like, oh, they don't have someone like you. Maybe that might be a great fit. Mm-hmm. Because if they have someone like you, then it, it, it'll it be a conflict of interest. Counterproductive, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um Usually that's something that they would think about mm-hmm. age range, uh, race, like the type of person you are and like, you know, all, all those things. Um, other than that, you could go to like acting classes and then, um, by the way, like anybody can take acting classes. It's mm-hmm. not just for actors. Anybody, if you're like working at a bank and you feel like you need like some sort of outburst or like you need you you need to get in touch with your emotion like sure absolutely just take an acting class but you know pick the right one so you don't you're not suddenly put into like a super scary one totally <laughs> but you know it's um take a class and and at any point in your life in your career even if you're 80 or 70 anybody can take a class mm-hmm. there is no restrictions unless it says in the class but most of them don't so okay. um Feel free to drop in in any of them, I'm sure. And then when you surround yourself with those pe- with like-minded people, usually they would have an agent and then you can talk to them and say like, hey, do you know anyone who's like, or what's your agent like? Or like, what's your agency like? Mm-hmm. And then they start to create their own circle and then maybe they could refer you to their agent. That's another way. Um, and sometimes some some casting directors would do like open casting calls and uh that would like sometimes post on facebook and stuff and then you just go mm-hmm. and show up and then if they like you they might be able to give you like a reference to an agency as well like you know there's different kinds of routes but i went through one of my some of my teachers from vfs okay um because obviously they knew me and they knew my work and i told them that like this is the kind of person i want and it just kind of it worked out. Nice. Um, yeah, I was very lucky. So that's awesome. So yeah. a little bit of luck could be involved. A little bit of luck, but you know, you need to you need to pursue it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people also like sometimes just wait to be discovered, yeah. and like, like good luck. <laughs> like yeah. that's you'll be waiting a while. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, don't yeah. wait for anything. Yeah, like waiters. If you really Not, like, want it, just like wait, but waiters. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's if you're not. Ready to, like, pursue it yourself? That's totally fair. Yeah. And if someone finds out, the world finds you, like, that's great. Good for you. I think you still need to, like, actively pursue it if you you know you want it right now. Yeah. Because a lot of, like, when you don't manifest it, people just won't know. And you can't expect people to know when you haven't even, like, put it out to the world. You can't. It's, uh... It's unfair, like, and then also you feeling defeated after 
not saying to the world and nobody noticed you. And it's like, oh, like maybe I'm not meant to. It's like, oh, that's not mm-hmm. fair to you. Like you didn't even put it out to the world. Yeah. So like, of course they didn't notice if you even tried. And then, you know, you move forward. But mm-hmm. a lot of people actually get defeated by not even trying. And it's it's fear. And that's totally fair. It's a very scary thing to put yourself out there. Like, it's so scary. Definitely. Which is why I mean, like, when you're ready, you should do, do it. it. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Mm-hmm. There's so many things, so much more that I want to talk to you about. <laughs> but we're definitely over an hour. I think maybe even an hour and a half. Oh, really? Oh, I my think. gosh. What so I'm going to... We're at two hours. Oh my gosh! Under t- it's actually under two hours because oh like I gosh. hit the record button before we start, but we're yeah, it's getting late. And, I am so sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no! Don't be sorry. I'm sorry. No, because normally great. I have to be. But you were like, you know, a good con. I told you if we have a good oh. conversation, it's going to keep going. So it's good. But there were so many more things that I did want to ask you. <laughs> so maybe one day we'll have you come back. Maybe if when the feature is like is done. <gasps> yes. In the meantime, you should go check out everything <laughs> everything this lovely lady has created oh, including akashi you. 10 minute short i think it's on vimeo right it is, is. It on actually too? if you look up mayumi yoshida on vimeo you'll go to my vimeo channel and it has um akashi tokyo lovers and the day we met which is another story hive short that i directed and co-directed with um Natch. Okay. And then I'm not in it in that one. Okay. And then uh, Way of the Bow, which is a documentary about uh, this archery team in Vancouver, oh, Japanese nice. um, uh, Canadian team. And then um, what do I? My demo reel. <laughs> yeah, your demo reel was uh, sick. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it looks thank really good. Thank you so much. I really yeah, uh, I just it was so funny. I was literally watching a different film last night. Uh, my friend, uh, do you know Tamo Campos? No. He's a snowboarder turned into an activist. Okay. He's still a snowboarder. But um, I met him at Whistler Film Festival. And uh, he was like, hey, this is my doc. And I watched it. And then the exact music that I was using for my demo reel, yeah. it was using it in his film. And I was like, hey, this is <laughs> awesome. I think we both made it was on art list or something. But uh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Anyways, it that's doesn't legit. matter. Yeah. No, that's awesome, though. Yeah, but you should uh, check out his stuff, too. I'm oh, just, I like, will, promoting sure. him. But, yeah. Like, no, yeah. No. His... But promote yourself, too. Where can yeah. people find you? Like, Instagram? Oh, what, what Instagram. It's I am... Wait. I'm my you me. So it's, like, I am M-Y-Y-O-U-M-E. Yeah. And I'll put uh, links to all of that stuff yes. in the description below. Instagram, below. Twitter. Do you have Twitter? Do you have yes, I do. Else? Same thing. Same thing? Same yeah, thing. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, You'll have... send me these links and I'll... Yes pop them down below i can totally do that any final words before we finish oh my gosh oh you know what one more the reason why i want to stay here is also like i met extraordinary people here Mm -hmm. i totally want to give a shout out to my fellow filmmakers here okay um First of all, Ryan Ma, who yeah. like got us together. 100%. So amazing. Black Rhino. Oh, Dope Hat. Dope Hat. Oh, yes. Black Rhino Creative. Woo! You know what? I'm going to make them this episode's partner. Even Yay! though they're, they're not, I'm going to force it Oh, on yeah. Them. He says yes. Yeah. <laughs> Today's episode brought to you by Black Rhino Creative. Yeah. And then yeah. Natch does the Meta, Joel McCarthy, Charles Chen from This Is a Spoon Studios. They're phenomenal. Um, Lawrence the Lamb, who is, you should, oh my gosh, you're going to talk over two hours with him. Really? Yeah, he's a, he's an amazing filmmaker. Okay, you need to send me links. I will. You'll love him. we'll definitely try to network that in. He is like times 10 energy of me. Really? And then, oh my gosh, he's so amazing. That's awesome. I can't, him, you you should have him and Jerome, you, uh, join but anyways, Jerome is Jerome's the one who plays Paul in Tokyo Lovers. Okay, yeah. Yeah, he became a filmmaker like a year ago. Mm-hmm. And then, um, who am I missing? There's Kashif, Pasta, Sean Valera from Dunia Media, who's in Surrey. Mm-hmm. And then Phil Planta, who's always producing my stuff with Natch. Um, Theo Kim. And just so many people. And Diana Bang and Andrea Bang and, and so many people. But yeah. That's awesome. I'm th- they're the reason why, like, I love this community and like yeah. want to like stay and cultivate what's happening here and also be part of it and contribute. So that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. 
big shout outs to Ryan Ma. Yes. He's a good friend of ours and who hooked us up for yes. this episode. Yes. I'm really happy that you came in and talked thanks. to us. It's great. Oh, thank you. I'm so happy too. Yeah, thanks so much. You could catch me on all the various platforms where you catch your podcasts, like Spotify, Apple, Google, all that jazz. Anchor FM. Thanks to Anchor for putting out my podcast to all those crazy platforms. <laughs> Anchor is actually great. If you're thinking about starting a podcast, get it up on Anchor because you post it there and they will post it everywhere else for wow. you. It's a one place, one stop shop. So for everyone who's like, Mayer, how do you start a podcast? You're just some random dude. And how do you do this? Well, you start with Anchor and a mic. That's all you need, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. So you can catch me on all of those platforms. Also hit us up on Instagram. We have a new YouTube channel dedicated to the podcast where you could catch not only the full episodes, but also highlights. Otherwise, you could just, you know, subscribe to my own personal channel where they will also be posted. Uh, thank you so much for watching the No Fun City podcast. This is episode 12. Peace out. Bye. Yay. Today's episode of the No Fun City Podcast is brought to you by Craft and Ride. Check them out at craftandride.com for all your one wheel and one wheel pint accessories. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button.